What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Welcome to the Pack-A-Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. We are moving closer and closer to Saturday's big game against the LA Rams at Lambeau Field. Green Bay sold out all of their tickets today, unsurprisingly. And uh, we are set for a really fun week of action, including that Packers-Rams game. But there were some news and notes around the NFL that I want to get to today, uh, as well as my main topic, which is going to be that Packers explosive offense versus the Rams defense. So I'll get into that in just a moment, but let's start with some of those news and notes. Let's keep it with the Green Bay Packers. Uh, First of all, Uh, First injury report comes out, uh, Kingsley Kiki, the only player that did not practice for Green Bay. So that's a very good sign. Rick Wagner, I think, was kind of the one that maybe the clouds were hovering a little bit and wondering, you know, was he going to be able to practice and come back? And was he going to play? Was Green Bay signing Jared Valdir because Rick Wagner maybe wasn't going to be able to go this weekend? But he practiced, he was limited, uh, but that was a great sign that he was able to practice on Tuesday. Um, And then again, Kingsley Kiki, the only one that did not practice. Speaking of Jared Valdir, his signing was official in the corresponding move. They moved Simon Stepaniak to injured reserve. Um, As of this time, I do not believe that we've gotten any clarification as to whether or not uh, Stepaniak re-injured something or aggravated something or, uh, you know, injured something else, or if this was simply he wasn't 100% ready to go yet and they just shut him down for the remainder of the season um, and basically probably because they needed a roster spot. So uh, we don't know that yet. Hopefully it's the latter. Hopefully they're just being more cautious with him. Um, If that's the case, the, the practice reps that he was able to get were invaluable for a player that, you know, at one point, We didn't even know if he was going to be able to play or practice at any point this season. This was definitely a hardcore redshirt season for Stepaniak. So the fact that he got the practice in that he did is certainly going to be valuable for him one way or the other. Uh, But he is the corresponding move to bring Jared Valdir on board, which by the way, means that Jared Valdir is in fact eligible to play this weekend. So um, based on the protocols, he always should have been, but there are a couple contingencies of how you need to travel to the team and then pass that COVID test and everything like that. But the fact that he was on the field practicing for Green Bay means that he was cleared, meaning that means that he's continued to stay within the protocols and means that he will, in fact, be able to play on Saturday should Green Bay want or need him to play this weekend. So another good sign there. Um, I also mentioned that I'd get back to you. I did uh, finish up his grades and, and watching his tape against the Bills. thought he struggled a little bit more against the Bills than he did against the Jaguars, which maybe shouldn't be surprising. Uh, the Bills are an actual good football team in a playoff game, whereas the Jaguars were basically just you know closing up shop for the season in their last game, although they did give the Colts a run for their money in that game. Um, but overall, um, you look at the two grades combined. He, you know, so in this game he graded it as a negative 0.4. His first game against Jacksonville, he was a plus 0.5. He was a plus 0.1 combined through those two games. And in his two games last year with Green Bay, plus 0.05. So basically almost an identical score from what he did in Green Bay a season ago to what he did with the Colts in two games this year. And that's exactly what you would expect out of him, right? So he, he's not going to be the guy that's going to come in. He's not going to look anything close to a David Bakhtiari. He's not going to be this, you know, major mover or enforcer in the running game. Um, You know, he has some issues uh, with speed around the edge, although his long arms and his frame certainly help him with that. Um, You know, he did struggle with converting, you know, with defensive ends and edge rushers who were converting speed to power and getting under his pads a bit. Mostly you could tell he was just a little bit rusty, right? Like he knows everything to do, but it just didn't always flow together because he's played two games throughout the entire course of the season. Remember he missed the last, you know, the vast majority of last season as well. So basically played two games last year for Green Bay, two games this year for the Colts. And you can just tell, you know, all of it's not put together yet, but even with that being the case, a positive grade through two games, including um, one of those being a playoff game, I just thought that what he was able to come in and do, it was. It seems like for the most part, it was like riding a bike for him. Um, again, his movement was great. His uh, Again, his ability to use his arms, uh, all of it was exactly what I expected. And again, I think the big takeaway here is he looked exactly like he did 
uh, for Green Bay a season ago, which again is a plug and play guy who can come in, you know, play 60, 70 snaps if you absolutely need him to, and you don't need to change your offense. Not super dissimilar. Uh, Rick Wagner's probably been a little bit better than that this season, but kind of what we expected out of Rick Wagner, basically similar to what Billy Turner's been able to do while playing offensive tackle. So you just don't find these guys hanging around uh, this time, you know, at this time of the season that you can find a, a legitimate, you know, fill in as a starting offensive tackle should you need one. So just a great signing by Brian Gutekunst. The other big piece of news on the day was from the Chicago Bears. First of all, maybe not so big news, but kind of big news. Chuck Pagano is retiring, so they will get a new defensive coordinator. So that's definitely something that Green Bay is going to want to monitor and see you know, who they bring in as a defensive coordinator. A lot of really good pieces. Eddie Jackson certainly has not been as good under Chuck Pagano you know, as he was with Vic Fangio. I think a piece of that is legitimately, you know, that Adrian Amos is gone and they haven't put, you know, great safeties next to him like Amos was. Although Tayshawn Gibson has definitely played better as of late. Um, but they still have Eddie Jackson. They've got Kyle Fuller. You know, Jalen Johnson was a really good pick. Uh, of course, you've got Roquan Smith. Uh, you've got Khalil Mack. You've got Robert Quinn, Akeem Hicks. Like there are a ton of pieces on that defense. And, you know, I, I thought they've, underperformed over the last couple of years. So if they get a really great defensive coordinator in it, you know, in there, that certainly makes Green Bay's job a little bit harder. So that'll definitely be one to keep, you know, to keep in mind a little bit. But overall, the really great news is that it looks like, and it's been reported, that Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace both will be back for Chicago. And if you remember, right here a couple months ago, as the Bears started, what, four and one, five and one, I think it was, I mentioned this was best case scenario for Packer fans because they were probably either going to miss the playoffs or maybe just limp into the playoffs, which they ultimately ended up doing. They weren't that good of a team. And this was going to push back their rebuild that they so desperately need. If What you always want to look at from a rebuild stand or just like an overall talent standpoint is who are the core young players, 25 and under, that you are afraid of over the course of the next three years that they really can build a roster around. And you look at Chicago, Maybe Roquan Smith, you know, Jalen, but he, he's been, he hasn't been quite as good as, you know, the, the perception may lead you to believe. Very talented player, but we're not talking about a top 10 NFL linebacker here. He's been good, but he's not been great. Jalen Johnson's a solid player. I don't see him developing into a top tier corner that's just going to shut down wide receivers. You know, Eddie Jackson's still a little bit young, but I, there's not, you know, Darnell Mooney was a nice pick, but I don't see him being, again, a... a top 20 wide receiver in the league. David Montgomery's good, but every team for the most part has a, a pretty darn good running back. Cole Komet certainly doesn't scare you. They don't have great you know, youth or depth along their offensive line. Like There's just nothing from a core standpoint. And of course, they don't have a quarterback. And this team is in desperate need of a rebuild. Khalil Mack getting older. Akeem Hicks getting older. Danny Trevathan getting older. You know, Buster Screen, Tayshawn Gibson, like a lot of their offensive line, Jimmy Graham. Like this isn't, Allen Robinson is probably leaving or if, even if he's staying, he's again, he's getting older. Like this is not a great core for a Bears roster. And again, they desperately need a rebuild. And by the way, they desperately needed like a top 10 pick so that they could get in those quarterback conversations or to try to trade up uh, for a Fields or a Lance. Um, you know, one of those type of players, Zach Wilson. And now they're going to be probably completely out of the quarterback conversation. I think they pick 21, 20 or 21 overall, right in that range. So this, put to me, puts the Bears back and sets them up for more mediocrity over the course of the next couple seasons. Maybe they have a really rough year next year and then they start the rebuild, which of course is still great. So th this was a very successful Bears season if you are a Green Bay Packers fan. And I think keeping Ryan Pace and... Um, and, uh, you know, Matt Nagy and that entire, you know, for the most part, that that structure in place. Now, the only thing they have yet to do is just give, you know, Mitch Trubisky that contract extension. So we'll see what happens there. Last but not least, my main topic for today. I have heard all the talk and all the discussion about the Green Bay Packers and, you know, how are they going to face Aaron Donald? What's Jalen Ramsey going to do? This Rams defense is the number one defense in all of football. And, you know, how are Green Bay, you know, how's Green Bay going to be able to put up points? And I've heard it all. And it, I'm telling you legitimately, I do not care. 
The Packers are the number one offense in football, and they've put up points against everyone, save for Tampa Bay, which was super fluky. If you remember, they went down and they scored 10 points pretty much immediately in that game. They had the two couple fluke plays with the you know near pick sixes. You know, one was just a bad read by Rodgers, which almost never happens. Another was kind of a, a tip ball kind of fluke play. And then by the time Green Bay got the ball back in the second half, they were down by like 20 some points. And all they could do was just pass and pass and pass and pass. And all of their offense went out the window. Outside of that, for the most part, they've been able to score on everyone. The only kind of other weird game was Carolina where Carolina played basically everyone in coverage and Green Bay just needed to run the ball. And for some reason they didn't. And I do not foresee them making that same mistake twice. Green Bay has the ability to put up points on anyone. Now, am I expecting another 30-point performance from Green Bay? I, I'm, I'm not sure I expect that, but I expect 27, 28 points, and I think that's going to be more than enough against that Rams offense. And I think if you're Green Bay's defense, you're not fearing that Rams offense in any way, shape, or form either. So if you're, you know, if you want to talk about the matchups, and you can, yes, talk about Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey, but you bet you can bet that this Rams team and their fans, they are dreading facing Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Jones and Devontae Adams. And, you know, from a coaching staff standpoint, figuring out how they make sure that they have somebody over the top so that MVS doesn't take the top off of the defense. And that Robert Tunyon isn't a uh, uh, continue to be a weapon catching touchdowns really from anywhere on the field. Well, not, maybe not anywhere on the field, but more in that gold zone type situations. But this is an incredibly tough offense to stop. And Matt LaFleur has been just almost perfect at finding flaws within an opposing defense and exploiting them. You want to play man, he will crush you with man beaters that he will take out some of your best plays. You want to play zone, he'll do the same thing against zone. You want to play off Devontae Adams, they'll pick you apart with those little, you know, screen plays. You want to focus on the run, he will pick you apart with boot, you know, boot action, play action, everything else under the sun. You know, you want to get your defense set and attack, he's going to give you jet motions and orbits and play action and moving Rodgers out of the pocket and everything else that's going to make your defense uncomfortable. And, you know, until you play Green Bay and you really get a feel for how they like to, you know, exploit some of your weaknesses, it is really tough to kind of figure that out in real time. And yes, this is a playoff game and, and you know you know LA is going to be well prepared. And I think that their defense as a whole is, is incredibly talented. And Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey certainly can pose problems, but I do not worry about what LA has on defense and what they can do. Worry about your offense and how you can execute at the highest level. Because again, I don't care who's playing defense. If Green Bay goes out and executes the way that they are capable of executing, their offense, their best offense beats the Rams' best defense and puts up points. Don't forget the Bills team with Josh Allen, um, similar type of weapons, Stephon Diggs instead of, um, you know, um, Devontae Adams, excuse me, um, you know, very similar type of structure and setup. You know, they went up and put 30 some points on LA and uh, and beat the, the Rams in that game. So, I just think that this is a matchup that really favors Green Bay, and I wouldn't get too focused in on the Ramseys and the Donalds. I would focus in on the Adamses and the Joneses and the Rogerses, the Rogers Eye, whatever you want to call it, because this offense has the ability to put up points again on anyone. So I'm, I'm not, I should add, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have contingency plans. I'm not saying that if you line up, you know, Devontae Adams and Jalen Ramsey shutting him down, of course, figure out ways to, um, you, you know, utilize him in different ways, put him in bunch formations, use him in the slot more. We've seen Devontae even line up in that running back position and motion out wide. Like we've seen them do a variety of different things to get him involved in the offense. Do that. You know, if all of a sudden some of your base offense isn't working, maybe do some of those two running back sets, whether it's A.J. Dillon um, and Aaron Jones or Jamal Williams and Aaron Jones. Get some of those two and three tight end sets running. See if you can run some power football with A.J. Dillon, you know, right down the gut on, on these guys. Or again, with, with Aaron Jones, Jamal Williams, whoever the hell you want to use. Like Green Bay has more options on offense to exploit any sort of defense that any defense can throw back. You know, there's only so many things a defense can do, even with players that are as talented as Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey. So forget every storyline this week about what Jalen Ramsey and, and, and Aaron Donald and this Rams defense can do and just focus on the, the threat that is the Green Bay Packers because I guarantee you again that that's what the Rams are focusing on this week. That's going to do it for me. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you have not already. Make sure to check out Dusty, Steve, and Sarah on today's audio edition of the Pack-A-Day podcast. Uh, you can always find the video version on YouTube. You can always find it, of course, on Packer Report as well. You can find the audio version wherever you get your favorite podcasts, or you can find it over on Cheesehead TV. 
Thanks so much for listening. I'll be right back here tomorrow because I'm here 365 days a year. But until next time, and as always, go Pack Go!